Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So let's continue with going through the binomial expansion and doing some practice questions to really get familiar so you're ready for those IB exams. So let's take the two questions I gave you last time. So we've got the expansion here of x plus 3 to the power of 10. And first of all, we need to write down the numbers of terms in this expansion. Well, that is going to mean, uh, let's draw. Drawing is good. So if it's to the power of 10, so you've got all the powers of x up to the power of 10 plus that constant term. So for question A, the answer will be 11 terms. So all those terms up to x to the power of 10, but then you have that constant term, so you get 11 terms in total. And now we need to find the term in x cubed. So let's write down our general formula for a particular term in expansion and see where we go from there. So we need the binomial coefficient, which can be Chen choose something. Well, we'll talk about the something uh, in a moment. We've got x cubed, which is what we want. So that's what we're looking for. And then we need to think of the power of 3 that we've got. Well, the powers always need to add up to 10. So this must be 3 to the power of 7. So we've got 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. That means we need to take 10 choose 3, because that's the same power as our x cubed. We could take 10 choose 7 as well. It's the same number, but I'll try and keep things consistent. So now we just need to work out what these things are. So first of all, 10 choose 3. So we go to our GDC. So here's our GDC. GDC sorry. And if we go to Menu, and if you go to Probability, this is the way I tend to access it, and go to combinations, we'll see we get this NCR notation I've been using, and we simply type in numbers for N and R, which is 10 and 3, that gives us 120, so back we go, so you get 120 multiplied by x cubed, and then multiplied by 3 to the power of 7, which I wrote down as 2000 187 and then we simply multiply these on our calculator and if we do that correctly we should get to the answer of oops 262,440 x cubed and uh, notice the mark scheme with IB they would have accepted you rounding at this point to three significant figures so if you put for example 260,000 or 262,000, they would accept those answers as well. So that's a very straightforward binomial question, grade 2, grade 3. And just to make sure you're really familiar with how to work out particular terms in the binomial sequence. Whereas if we take a question 15 here, so let me just rub this out. This is certainly a bit more trickier, and we have to think about this a bit more carefully. So we need to consider the expansion of the following binomial. So we've got 3x squared plus k over x to the power of 8. And then that is with, oh, let's put a pen. There we are. Perfect. And then we're multiplying that by x squared. And we want to find out the constant term. That is when there is no x term in the question. And we need to find k. Seven marks. So I'm not going to give this for free. So we have to work this out very carefully. So let's start by writing down our x squared. Okay, and essentially what we're looking for is a term in this binomial expansion that has an x to the minus 2, because that will cancel with the x squared at the front. So let's set up our binomial coefficient and the term that we're looking for. So first of all, we know it's 8 at the top, so 8 choose something, we don't know what something is, we'll try some values in a moment. We've got 3x squared, so 3x squared, this is a bracket honestly, there we are, uh, to a power which we don't know yet, we'll talk about that. And then we've got k over x also to a particular power, and then I'll close that square bracket there. And then we'll have a think about what numbers can go in. So we need to think of a term that's going to give us x to the minus 2. 
So let's think of numbers that add up to 8 and put some numbers in. Let's try 4. So let's try 4 as an example. And then we'll see why this doesn't work. So if we do this to the power of 4, well, we get a term in x to the power of 8. And here we get a term of over x to the power of 4. And if we cancel those down, we get x to the power of 4, because 8 minus 4 is 4. Then multiply by x squared gives us x to the power of 6. So that's certainly something that we don't want. So that doesn't seem to work. There we are. So let's try some different numbers. OK, let's try, for example, we want this to be quite big, don't we? So if we try this as 6 and this is 2, let's see what happens. So if we multiply this out, we get a term in x to the power of 4. Here we get a term underneath of x to the power of 6. If we simplify that down, that will give us an x to the minus 2, which will then cancel with this. So this is going to be our correct numbers in the powers here for each of these terms. So now we can fill out some of the other numbers. So if this is 2, this must be 2. So this is 8 choose 2. Let me just erase this part here and this part here. And let's actually work these things out. So first of all, we've still got the x squared there, so we'll keep that the same. Let's work out 8 choose 2. So we go to our GDC. We do the same function, menu, probability, combinations. We type in 8 choose 2. That gives us 28. So we go back and we write in 28 here. OK, then we're going to square this. Now remember, if we're squaring it, we have to square the number and the power. So 3 squared is 9. X to the power of 4. If we do this to the power of 6, well, we have to do to the power of 6 of both numerator and denominator. So we get k to the power of 6 over x to the power of 6. Close bracket. Should be a square bracket, strictly speaking. OK, so let's keep working things out. So as we wanted, so I'll do this in red, just highlight this. This cancels with this, but then we get x squared here. So let's just keep simplifying these things down. So then we get x squared, that comes from the front here, times 28 times 9 times k to the power of 6 over x squared. And because these will cancel, this is all equal to our constant term. If you go right to the beginning of the question, is 16,128. Now, just as we wanted, this cancels with this, which is very helpful. And if we work out 28 times 9, that will give us 252. We do that on a calculator, of course. And then to the power of k to the power of 6 is still there, and that's equal to our constant term. And now we've got it down into an equation that we can solve. So we divide by 252 on both sides. That gives us then k to the power of 6 is equal to 64. And so k itself will be equal to the sixth root of 64. You may know already, off by heart, but you can always put it in your GDC as well. So if we go to that, we go to Control and this button here. So we can type in 6 here, 64 there. And you press the Enter button and we get the answer of 2. However, we have to be slightly careful because the answer is 2. But remember, if it's the power of 6, it's an even power. So anything like k squared, k to the power of 4, k to the power of 6, those even powers always have 
is those two answers. So we need to remember the plus and minus two to get all seven marks on that particular question. So just to recap exactly what we've done for that more difficult question, first of all, we decided which uh, term in the binomial expansion we wanted, and we tried some numbers. We tried four and four, didn't work. We tried two and six, and we realized that gave us um, this x squared in the denominator, which will eventually cancel with this, giving us a constant term. So where they increase the difficulty is when they put a polynomial before the binomial expansion, which you need to try and cancel out of the expression. Okay, once we did that, then we simply got an equation in terms of k, and then we solved it using our usual methods to then get to answer of plus or minus 2. Okay, so if you can do those kind of questions 15 quite consistently, you'll be more than ready for the IB standard level exam. So today's practice will be um, a bit more and also in more depth as well. So I would like you then to have a go at these questions here. So we've got question 18, 19, 20, 21, and then 22A at the bottom as well. So have a go at those questions. They're certainly more difficult, particularly question 19. So you have to be very careful with how that's going to work. And best of luck. So in the next video, I will go through not all the questions from here, but I certainly will choose some of the harder ones. So I will take certainly question 19 at the very least, and probably one or two more. And then we'll move on to a different topic to revise. Okay, bye-bye for now.